it's Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy and welcome back to my video series, Mastering Machine Quilting with Rulers. So far in this series, we've used Taj to do a couple different things. Taj has helped us quilt a border design, a motif, we've done some overlapping outside arcs, but now, now we're ready to go in all different directions as we learn the meander with the Taj ruler. I'm gonna show you how to work your way around an area, how to fill in those weird spaces that might show up as you're quilting, and most importantly, how to fill the whole space in as completely as possible. And I'm gonna demonstrate it on a sewing machine and a long arm. It's gonna be a ton of fun, so let's get started. Now I'm gonna be filling in the background area of one of my star blocks. So I'm gonna hold the ruler in place and I'm gonna quilt along the inside. But I'm gonna stop as soon as I run into something. You can see where I ran into the edge of my block now, without moving the ruler or repositioning it, I'm gonna travel back along the line I've just quilted to one of my reference marks. And let's just go to the halfway point. This is easy to travel because I can keep the ruler in place and I don't have to do anything else besides quilt along it. Now, when I go to position my ruler for the second leaf, I'm gonna have it go in a different direction until I get to the starting point or until I run into something else and then back up. When I go to position my ruler for my next leaf, I'm really kind of looking to make sure that it's not overlapping anywhere. What's nice is I can use this ruler almost like a handle. By putting one hand on either side, it's gonna give me something to hold on to and also help me keep it in place. Of course, the grip that comes on the back of the rulers is very helpful as well. Now, when I go to position my ruler here, it's going to overlap the previously quilted leaf. I have a couple of options. I could just position it like this, or I can position it like this, but just stop when I run into that previously quilted leaf. What this is gonna do is help me fill in that area as much as possible. Backtrack, and then reposition. Even if it looks like it's gonna run into something, I still have to remember that there's a quarter of an inch between the edge of my foot and my needle. So I can have it overlap just a bit, within a quarter of an inch, and that means my line will come right up to my seam without going over. Now, if you happen to reposition the ruler and you don't have room, let's say this is the only area that I could go, I can travel along the seam to get to the next side so I can complete the shape of the leaf. And it's just gonna make that leaf look like it's going behind this seam right here. The great thing about this is when you reposition the ruler, you're gonna see exactly where you're quilting. So if you don't like how it's looking, you can reposition it, slide it over, add a little more traveling, whatever you need to do. But I'm going in a lot of different directions, trying to fill in that area as much as possible. And you don't always have to start at the end. I could reposition it and start anywhere on that ruler I want to, just looking and taking a moment to see where it's gonna end up, quilting along it, and then backtracking. It could be the full shape, part of the shape, whatever it takes to fill in your area. Now, as you start to work your way into corners or tight areas, that's where you're gonna do a little bit more of overlapping, a little more creative positioning of your ruler. But remember, as long as you have the whole thing filled in, it's gonna be fine. Now, just like I would with any other meander, I'm still treating all this quilting as a blob. I know that's not the most lovely word picture. And what that means is I'm handling all these little corners and gaps while I'm here. Now let's say it's just not quite the right size. It's just a little short or a little long. You can always reposition the ruler mid quilt. So here I've quilted along my ruler, but I'm gonna stop and extend it out a little bit further just to help it reach the edge of my area as much as possible. no matter how hard you try, chances are you're gonna end up with a weird kind of gap where a lot of leaves come together. I'm gonna to reposition my ruler so that it takes up as much of that space as possible. It's gonna overlap much of the previously quilted leaves, but that's okay because I'm just gonna quilt along it and stop when I run into a previously quilted leaf. And I'm taking my time, I'm repositioning the ruler, and I'm finding the placement that takes up the most area without overlapping. It's not the end of the world if you have a gap in between your leaves, especially if it's smaller than the leaf itself. 
Now, whenever I teach quilting classes, I always say that as long as the space in between the design is the same size or smaller, it's gonna be fine. And that's why I'm okay with leading gaps that are quite big. They're still smaller than the leaves, so you still get that beautiful all over look. And I'm just gonna keep on going till the whole space is filled in. Now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use Taj on the long arm, but I have something just a little different. Instead of using the class quilt, I actually use this on a quilt that I did for Tula Pink called Anchors Away. I used it to create this fun meander to fill in areas of her quilt, and then I threw in some pebbles. I wanna show you how easy it is on that quilt. So I'll position the ruler, holding it in place. I'll quilt along the inside of the ruler. I can stop and reposition my hands if necessary. Once I've completed the shape, I'm gonna just backtrack either direction so that I can easily reposition that ruler to the next spot. And you can see I'm starting to get that fun meandering shape, so I'm gonna quilt a little bit more. And as always, if I need to position it so that it overlaps another quilted leaf, I can just quilt along and stop once I hit it. Now, of course, this will look great just as it is, but I'm gonna go back and fill in some of those spaces with pebbles. Remember, 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 the most important thing is that that whole area is filled in as completely as possible. I've said it a million times in this video, but it is the most important part. So if you're quilting along with me on the class quilt, go ahead and fill in the area behind one of your stars with a meander using Taj. And if you need a little help, I have free quilting diagrams and a tip sheet below. You can check that out in the description box. And I'll see you soon with another video in the Mastering Machine Quilting with Rulers video series. And hey, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. You don't wanna miss any of the videos. I'll see you soon and happy quilting.